Hi everybody, welcome to The Current. We bring you fresh live music to your living room each Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Together and share moments that inspire and move through classical and contemporary. <laughs> While live concerts are unable to happen, we're going to be presenting them. On so feel free to uh, join us for this special music event. Uh, so tonight we have uh, three performers, uh, kind of different styles. Uh, I think we'll start with uh, Mr. Ron Brendel. Uh, Ron, if you don't know, is Charlotte's foremost bass players. Uh, there's a whole variety of, of uh, jazz, klezmer, uh, you know, different things. Has lots of records out, lots of original music, and a big promoter of the scene. How's it going, Ron? Good. How are you? Great. Uh, what are you going to do for us tonight? Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to do um, some some um, layering with the. Uh, the Ron Brendel Quarantet, <laughs> also known as the Boss Loop Station. <laughs> That's the ad hoc name for the, it's the Ron Brendel Quarantet. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do, uh, when I was in, uh, when I first got to college up at ASU, um, I went to, a, to the college record store and they had a big sale. And uh, I remember the first, three LPs that I bought there. One was um, Charlie Bird, called <laughs> Crystal Silence. One was um, a Buddy Rich, Milt Hinton, Bucky Pizzarelli, and Zoot Sims record. And then one was called the, uh, was called Chinese Classical Music. And it was orchestral music <clears throat> from popular Chinese songs from the 30s and 40s. And it really made a big impression on me. It was just kind of a random pick. And uh, over the years, it's really had uh, an effect on, on me. I like I like the music of, of other cultures and particularly Chinese music. So <clears throat> anyway, this is going to be sort of inspired by that. And uh, it doesn't have a name, but we can worry about that later. You want me to go ahead and start? Yeah, great. Take it away. Thank you. 
you. Very nice. Thanks. Yeah, so uh, talk to us a little bit about the looping. Um, I know <laughs> into it. T tell me about kind of your process, how you got into it, what your thoughts are on it. Um, yeah, I, I, I like it. I don't use it enough. It's um, uh, Jane, uh, my wife, gave me gave it to me several years ago as, as a birthday present. And I think I, I sat in a box for about two months. And I finally got, you know, because I know there's a learning curve with this stuff, and I don't look forward to that. And, but this was relatively easy, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I use it off and on. Uh, I like it with electric. Um, sometimes I hook a microphone up to it and use an a African thumb piano and some different acoustic instruments, but I haven't gotten over the feedback and, you know, weird issues with that yet. But, um... Um, yeah, I'm not real sophisticated with it to tell you the truth. I, I just kind of start a few notes and and uh, I loop those and then I can just kind of see what, what kind of tonal center I have, where, where it's going to go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, I've used it before, like you know, walking, like you know, bass lines and playing melodies over that, uh, like and play a couple of live settings where I've played with loops. Uh, that's that's one way to do it, but <clears throat> it's a great tool for writing songs with too. I think I've written a few songs just from messing around and mm. layering stuff on it. Uh, but that's about it. I don't I don't play a whole lot with a bow. Um, just enough to make some noise. Kind <laughs> 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 great though. Thanks, man. Definitely the Chinese influence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How's uh, how's the quarantine been going? Any uh, I know it seems to be thawing out a little bit. Any any moving on the gig front or anything? Uh, I I have I've gotten calls for a couple of gigs in October. Mm -hmm. uh, and nothing no, I have nothing on the books before that. Um, I know that you know I, I, you know I do the, the first Fridays of every month at the Beckler and. I know they're in discussions right now about when they're coming back with that. I know they are, but I don't know when. Mm -hmm. And and other than that, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything, man. I mean, you know, it's it's this call uh, this all unknown yeah. territory. You know, it's just trying to make the best of it, like you and everybody else. You know, we're all in the same boat. There you. Go. Well, cool. Well, thanks, Ron. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming back. Well, I really, yeah. Thanks for uh, having me back. I'm. Uh, happy to happy to do it. Cool. Looking forward to hearing the other other guys. Great. Take care, Ron. Thanks. Bye bye. All right. Now we're going to go to Allison. Allison, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Why don't you uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I think this is the first time you're you're on the uh, current, right? Yeah, it is. Um, so I know Elizabeth from UNCG. Mm -hmm. um, we were in graduate school together there. And um, actually, I'm going to be playing Baroque violin today instead of modern violin. Mm. Um, because that's been my most uh, recent passion is Baroque violin. And so I decided to play Bach today for this. Um, oh. Yeah, so I'm going to be playing the third sonata, the third unaccompanied sonata by Bach from his set of six sonatas and partitas for violin. Okay. Tell, tell us a little bit about the Baroque violin. What makes it different from a, from a regular violin? Um, yeah, so the predecessor of the violin, uh, the modern violin, uh, basically the way that the violin evolved over time was um, basically the tension was just increased in a lot of different ways. So for example, um, my strings are actually pretty low tension here and I'm using gut strings. I don't know if you can tell. My G string is metal wound here, but my other three are actually um, pure gut. So they're not even wound with metal. Um, there's, I'm, there's no chin rest. I'm not using a shoulder rest. Um, and the bow is actually the, mo the biggest different thing. So the hatchet head shape that you see on bows was um, 
invented sometime in the 19th century. I can't remember the exact date in France. And so everything before that actually had sort of a pointy tip on it. Um, and there's no metal on this either. So the whole thing is just wood. And so it's a lot lighter. Um, and the other thing is that, you know, the way that the that the arch goes here, it, it changes the way that the bow kind of works when you when you play with it it kind of moves in a little bit different way mm. um and so the reason that we um like to try these historical instruments is because it kind of shows you how um bach would have been playing these pieces you know bach was also a violinist and you know this is close ish to the equipment that he would have had so um you know it kind of it kind of shines a little bit of a light on how to play it um i mean these these unaccompanied sonatas and partitas i mean all violinists everywhere around the world play these pieces and everybody plays them differently which of course that's kind of what makes them so amazing i mean you can you can just reinvent them every day in fact so obviously i've been practicing these for tonight and last night when i was practicing a deer walked through my backyard and i i'm standing in front of a window which you can't see because it's behind me behind the camera um and i realized that actually i was playing it differently i don't know if the deer could actually hear it but i i was playing it kind of differently for the deer because of course deers get spooked easily and i didn't want to spook the deer so i was like playing it like this really kind of gentle way it was i don't know it was really fun <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh, let me ask you one one more question are you doing anything different with tuning or temperament because of it? it's a broke instrument Yes, um, I well, the, my tuning is at 415 now. Um, I'm using pretty much pure temperament because of all the double stops in Bach. You really um, you just want to have really pure chords. Um, but yeah, so when I play these in concert, you know, and there's other things happening and then I might be tuned to like another temperament and then I would actually retune my violin to like more pure fifths to mm. play this because it's just it's really beastly if you don't have pure fifths and just it usually doesn't come out good honestly <laughs> got it well i'm excited to hear it so uh whatever, whatever. okay okay great actually i'm gonna check these strings here <laughs>
I'm actually a big fan of uh, kind of early instruments in general. Oh, cool. I like, I like broke violin. It's very much kind of a, a softer, I guess, pure sound. I don't know what you say. Um, yeah, yeah. Definitely go for resonance over projection. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so this violin specifically was actually built in North Carolina. There's a maker named John Pringle who lives in Eppland, North Carolina, and he made this violin for me. Wow. Yeah, and it's really pretty. It has like a really pretty um, fingerboard and tail piece. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Cool. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you're, you're coping with uh, quarantine, because that's kind of the, the one of the focuses of the show is kind of to give people a spotlight that, you know, because of everything that's been happening, we haven't had a chance to uh, to actually perform. So how have I know, been? I know. Um, yeah, it, I mean, there are some rough days for sure. And I actually didn't realize until last week how much I missed playing with other musicians. I actually went and I had a sight reading session with a pianist. We're going to be doing a recording project. Um, and it was it was so amazing to be able to just sit down and sight read with another musician. Um, I had to play with a mask on, which was really annoying to play violin with a mask. I was playing modern violin. And so it's like between your chin and your shoulder rest. And then like it kept like getting in my like lower eyelashes. Like it was really annoying, but you know, it was worth it. So that's actually the only like gig that I have coming up is a recording session there. But other than that, I'm just teaching. Luckily, most of my students have decided to continue lessons with me. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, I even have a couple students that still come for in person lessons, um, which, you know, I, we just have like a new studio rule, like, you know, wash your hands as soon as you come in the house, stuff like that. And honestly, I'm, I'm thinking we should have been doing that all along. So I think that's going to be a permanent rule just every time you come to my house wash your hands <laughs> yeah i will say I, I like a lot of the new rules i think these should have been rules that we've had all along <laughs> yeah because of flu and you know h1n1 and all of those other things yeah i agree well thank you so much allison thank you for having me take care all right and our last performer is mr jw turner 
Can you hear me, JW? <laughs> How's it going? Well, I'm doing all right. It's uh, this is some marvelous performances here. It's a real uh, privilege to be here tonight. Uh, I met Elizabeth years ago when I was playing the cello, and uh, it, it's nice to have an opportunity to, to come come play again. <laughs> so, um, I'm not playing an early instrument, I'm sad to say, and I'm not playing Bach, which I know for a cellist is kind of perverse, but that's just you know kind of how I run. Um, before I, before also, I ask you about your piece, let me just do a little uh, little uh, uh, paperwork here. Oh, you got uh, for anybody that's listening um, on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, please consider contributing to the performers on our show. Uh, some of us have been out of work since mid-March and have not had much of any relief. Um, we're thankful for DAW Classical Public Radio um, to help us. Uh, I just lost my notes here. <laughs> Basically, we get uh, uh, DAW uh, gives us fifty dollars to sponsor the current, but anything else that you can contribute goes directly to the performers and to us to help to run this uh, the show. Uh, so Venmo is CLT New Music, uh, Cash App Dollar Sign CLT New Music, and PayPal uh, Charlotte New Music. And you can also go to the CharlotteNewMusic.org website to. Uh, Check out some more information, but uh, any any uh, contribution you can make, large or small, would be much appreciated. So, thanks very much. Um, so, back to uh, JW. What are you going to be doing for us today? And and give us a little bit about yourself and how what you've been doing and what you want to play. Good heavens. Uh, well, uh, I'm doing the second of three pieces called Cello Variations by uh, Charles Warren and. And these were all written for uh, for Fred Sherry, a marvelous cellist up in the New York area. Uh, and and to the the second two, this one and, and number three, uh, were birthday presents for him. Uh, so they're kind of um, they've got a kind of an intimacy about them that I think is really uh, entertaining. And uh, they, it's just got a lot of nice um, nice nice shapes and and really beautiful uh, uh, expression in it. It's, it's been a really wonderful piece to work on. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and play it. And, Great. Take it away. You can talk about it if you like. <laughs>
I really like that piece. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> just everything about it, it's just the composition, the colors that they used in there. Um, was that, say the, the composer's name again, please? Charles Wurrenen from New York. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, was that through composed or were there improvisation sections in there? Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> no, it's all written out. Um, as I understand it, Wurrenen writes with time points. So this isn't like a theme in variations the way we usually think about it, but everything is, um, it's like a, a mobile or something that, you know, all the, the durations are related back to the original uh, pitch set in terms hmm. of proportion and time and and uh, i don't actually get it uh, i'm ashamed to say i, sh I should have i should know all this <laughs> but uh, but it's very complex and so it's more yeah, as you say sort of through composed and um but i just kind of go for the, the the colors of the shapes you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's gorgeous okay. um so tell, tell us a little bit about what you what you've been up to in the uh, quarantine well, I'm actually doing really well in the quarantine. I'm kind of an introvert, and it's really nice not to have to, to go out and, to, you know, as I say, to spend some time with the cello, which I never get to do. Yeah. Um, I, I teach uh, a sort of a comprehensive musicianship program at High Point University, so I do theory and, and culture and liberal arts and all kinds of things. And uh, sometimes I actually get to see this thing, and a lot of times it's just gathering, you know, cobwebs over in the case. So, <laughs> as I say, it's been a real... Uh, kind of a vacation for me and I have to remind myself that you know if other people are getting stir crazy and they don't like it that it's raining and it's like yeah, I'm sorry about that yeah. do you think you'll you'll change kind of focus or direction or anything when this is done or well I don't know I don't know um th I learned there's a lot that I found out about um cello playing and my relation to it you know as I get older it it, it uh, changes you know and it's changed really profoundly um in the last uh, 10, 15 years. And, uh, you know, that I was able to kind of pull this off, I think is, is really um, liberating. Uh, you know, there are two other pieces in the set, you know, so I mean, <laughs> maybe I should look at number three. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounded fantastic. Thank well, you. Thank so you so much. So we'd like to thank, uh, thank JW, Allison and Ron for uh, performing tonight. Uh, we'll be back next Tuesday uh, at the same time at eight o'clock. I just wanted to give uh, one more, plug uh for for donations again um to elizabeth is going to post up the uh the links uh charlotte new music for all three venmo cash app paypal um which are appreciate again all the money goes to uh the performers and to help us run this program every week so uh one more thank you to allison to ron and to jw and we'll have a whole new slate of uh, people next week so take care everybody thank you very much